Hey everyone. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at the various steps and workflows I use to create the visuals you see here. We're gonna start with the viewport and shader setup, moving our way through retopology techniques and texture extraction. Let's get started. I tend to start by setting up my lighting. In this case, I'm using image-based lighting to generate the lighting and reflections of my scene. I'm also separating the backplate from the environment in order to have a nicer looking background image. This is all achieved by using the new OSL HDRI environment shader. Setting your viewport to high quality enables everything needed to have a great looking viewport. I'm not crazy about the skylight flickering in and out on mouse up, so I usually disable it and save this as a custom preset. This allows me to go back to this configuration whenever needed. This scan mesh is roughly 500,000 polys in size. It's not only too heavy, but has bad topology. We'll deal with this later. Taking a closer look, we can see the mesh has some smoothing problems. Adding a smooth modifier set to auto smooth can solve this. Let's set up our materials. I have a series of PBR textures I would like to use. In update three for 3ds Max 2021, we added a handy PBR texture importer. This utility allows me to browse to a folder containing any number of PBR textures and import them automatically. The rules by which the utility works are found under the settings tab. You can modify these rules to suit your pipeline. From here, you can define which type of material to create as well as whether or not to apply the materials to selected objects. I'm going to use this beat up metal shader for my mask. Let's go ahead and turn down the specularity in order to better understand how these textures are mapping to my object. As you can see, we have some texture stretching. I can try applying a UV map modifier, but no matter which mapping method I use, I always have some texture stretching. Box produces the best results, but it's not perfect. Instead, let's use triplanar mapping. Locate the blended box map shader and bring it into Slate. Blended box mapping allows you to project one, three, or six textures and blend between these projections. I'll repeat this process for all my textures. Here's a tip. Drag any shader into a connection line in Slate to insert the shader directly into your graph. No more stretching, no more visible seams. Let's bring back our specularity. It's okay, but it could use some love. Unfortunately, this PBR kit didn't come with a roughness map. Let's create our own. Connect the base blended box output into a color correction shader and its output into our roughness input. Set the color correction shader to monochrome and adjust the brightness values. This creates a more textured roughness map rather than using a solid value. It's time to deal with topology and mesh resolution. I like to set my viewport to clay mode for this. Make a clone of your model and hide one. Since our mesh is symmetrical, we can remove half of it with a slice modifier. This will significantly help with everything we're about to do. Next, use a pro-optimizer modifier to reduce the overall poly count. In this case, 25% produced decent results. The resulting mesh is faceted. Use a smooth modifier once again to smooth things out. The smooth modifier produces some visual artifacts. We can solve this by adding the new weighted normals modifier. It's time to retopologize. Set your desired final poly count. Remember we're dealing with half of the mesh only. Also, I won't need any hard edge detection. So I'll go ahead and disable auto edge. Hit the compute button. This solution took 65 seconds to calculate. 
As you can see, some detail was lost. This is to be expected since we significantly reduced the poly count. Less polys means less detail. We'll instead use normal maps to capture the lost detail. Use a symmetry modifier to mirror the mesh. Use another weighted normals modifier with smoothing turned on to remove any visual artifacts. You can also increase the iterations to smooth things out further. Next, add an unwrap modifier to create our UVs. Ideally, you would spend some time here generating your UV layout. In order to speed things up, and because I won't be dealing with MIP mapping, a simple flattened mapping will be sufficient. Make sure to pack your UVs using the new concave packing method in order to maximize UV space. Open the texture baking dialog and add our traditional PBR inputs. Make sure you are using the original high-res mesh as the source for texture extraction. Adjust the cage by resetting the values and increasing the push amount. Set the appropriate resolution and add an output material. Our low-res clean quad model is now virtually identical to our high-res scan model. All that's left to do is add a camera, turn on some depth of field, and enable the new viewport bloom to create a great looking shot. Thanks for watching.